So I want to start this video with an apology to all of my second generation Fire TV stick owners, the ones running Fire OS 5.2 something, and also my viewers with the first and second generation Fire TVs. And the reason why I want to apologize is um, I finally got a second generation Fire TV stick myself, just because I know lots of you still have this older device and I wanna make sure that my tutorials do work on that device. Well, on this device, and also on the second generation Fire TV, the one that is a beast even to this day, on both of those devices, every time I go to Remote ADB Shell, and as we know, that's the program that I've been using for all of my tutorials on the 4K Fire Stick, I start the application and I have my IP address and the default port for ADB, which is 5555. I click on connect, and guess what guys? It just never connects. So. So please do let me apologize for that because as they say, if you don't know, you just don't know. And I didn't have this device to confirm, but I can categorically 100% confirm now on the second generation Fire TV stick or the Fire TV, you cannot use remote ADB shell to make a connection to itself. Now saying that, that doesn't mean that ADB is not working because from my machine or from my cell phone, I can still make those connections and send those ADB commands. On top of that, on my second generation Fire TV stick now, if I press the home key, we can see in fact I can get a custom launcher working on this device. It's super fast, no Amazon adverts, nothing like that. So it does work on these older devices. I just have to slightly tweak the process. So guys, please do bear with me. Make sure you are subscribed and I will be releasing an update for these older devices very, very soon. Hey, Tech Doctor. How can I fix this issue where my third party side loaded applications just don't seem to show the app icons properly? On top of that, how can I just have a much nicer looking user interface? Oh, and how can I do all of that in less than 10 seconds? Um, let's start the clock. Okay, so firstly, I'm gonna open up this special application. Let's do that now. I'm then going to click on okay. And then I'm going to click over here, select this thing over here, I'm now going to press home. And there you have it in less than 10 seconds. We've now fixed that issue where the app icons don't show properly. We can see here, we do have an icon for all of our applications. On top of that, we have a really nice slick looking Android TV interface with none of the Amazon adverts, none of the Amazon sponsored content, none of the promoted stories, all of the stuff that we want, we can now access. And as you saw, I didn't type in any commands, any kind of remote ADB show, or anything like that. Literally just start one special application, select your launcher, and you now have this gray interface on your device. So with all of that being said, let's get started. If you're new to the channel and you want to stay up to date with the latest tech tutorials, the latest Fire Stick, Android and Android TV tips and tricks, then please do subscribe and hit the notification bell. It's a small click from you, but it makes a big difference to me. Thank you. Okay, so to start this process, the only thing you need to do is just go into settings, My Fire TV, and just ensure that you have the developer options enabled, the ADB debugging on. Once you have that, you can now press the home key and let's now start Downloader. Now, as mentioned at the start of this video, the key thing about this process, it doesn't require any kind of manual typing. So no ADB commands, no remote ADB shell. All you need to do is just install one special application and that will do all of the legwork for you. Now to get this application, we're going to make a connection to my website, which is just http colon forward slash forward slash bit.ly forward slash tduk that's me and the numbers 201 line let's type that in and click on go or just press the play button on your remote now when you get to my website you will see there is a dedicated section for tutorials so let's go over to the hamburger menu and I go to tutorials let's open up that new tutorial and here it is so use the tv launcher on the amazon fire tv cube scroll down and these are the three files that you need. So first is a helper application. So this will make the connection for you and type in the command. Second is the actual application, which allows you to select a custom launcher. And many thanks to Eric for that. And lastly, we have the custom launcher. Now in my example, I'm going to use the leanback launcher, but you could use any launcher like ATV launcher or TV launcher. I do have a few of those on my website. Now, if you want to change the default background to a custom one, you can also download my wallpaper that I was using in my demonstration, or you can download any picture or wallpaper from the internet. Just make sure that the file is called background.jpg and make sure you copy that file to the root of your internal storage, which I'll show you in just a second. And if you're looking for a file manager, I highly recommend Explore. 
This will allow you to rename files, move stuff around, copy things, a really great application, which works on all of your devices with the standard remote control. Okay, let's start with the first one, which is helper application. Let's click on that. Let's scroll down. I'm looking for the green download button. Now, one of my viewers was saying yesterday that when he was actually trying to do this, his device was coming up with an error, uh, but he managed to fix it himself by changing his DNS servers, or alternatively enabling his VPN because his ISP was blocking access to archive.org. And that's where I actually store these applications. So if you have any issues where you can't seem to download, maybe try changing your DNS or alternatively activate your VPN. Okay, let's click on install. So that's the helper application there. That's the first one. Let's click on done. Let's press the back button and let's now get the FTV launch X. Let's scroll down and let's click on the green download button. Okay, let's give that a second. Okay, let's click on install. So that's the second application that we've installed today. Let's click on done. Let's, cl let's click on done. Let's press the back button. And lastly, let's get that custom launcher. Let's go down and click on the green download button. Now the lean back launcher has lots of customizations and I'll show you how you can customize having the favorites row, how you can add things into favorites, how you can change your background, how you can adjust the number of rows you have and things like that. So if you are interested in fully customizing your launcher, make sure you do watch this video to the end. In fact, guys, just while we're waiting, if you are enjoying these videos, if you want to see more tutorials for the second generation Fire TV Cube or the 4K Fire Stick, or the NVIDIA Shield, or your generic Android boxes, then please do like this video and also think about subscribing because that really is the best way you can help out my channel. Thank you. Okay, let's click on install. So that's the third thing we've installed today. Let's also get that wallpaper. Let's click on done. Let's click on done again. Let's click on the wallpaper. So I've already renamed this wallpaper that I was using to background.jpg, but if you want to download something else, just make sure you give it that name. Let's click on done. And let me also download this file manager. And this is the last thing that we're going to be downloading today. So we're nearly there, guys. Let's click on install. That's it, guys. We can now click on done again. Let's press the home key. Okay, and let's now go to our apps library. So press and hold the home key. Let's click on apps. So that long press home shortcut actually changes when you do change the launcher, but we'll show you how you can still access this even if you are using a custom launcher. Let's go down. So this is the hopper application there. We can't see the icon for it, but it's not this one because if I start this, I can actually confirm that this is actually explore. So I can back out of that, back again. Okay, so we're now going to start the hopper application. It's going to prompt us saying that, do you allow this application to make an ADB connection? I'm gonna click on okay. And that should be pretty much it guys. So let's see if that works first time. Let's click on that. Here we go. Let's click on okay. That immediately starts FTV launch X for us, and we can now just select a launcher, guys. So really slick, really easy to use, one click and you're in. So definitely do give a thumbs up for that. So now we can just choose whichever launcher we want to use. So I'm gonna click here. And in this example, let's use the lean back launcher. Let's now press the home key. And there we are, guys, with one click, we've now used a custom launcher on our second generation Fire TV Cube. And we can see straight away, that issue where the app icons are missing is now instantly fixed because we can see the icons for everything. That's working great. Okay, it's so a couple of things. So how do we customize the background? How do we get the long press home shortcut? How do we temporarily get back to the stock launcher? And lastly, how do we permanently get back to the stock launcher? Okay, so let's start with how do we update the background image because the default one looks okay, but it is a bit grainy. So how do we change that? Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to open up our file manager. So in my example, I'm going to use Explore. And because we downloaded my wallpaper from Downloader, I now need to open up Internal Storage and find the folder for Downloader because that will have the picture in there. Let's go down. There's Downloader. Okay, we've got quite a few pictures here, but this one is already called Background.jpg, so let's go with that. But let's say for example, if I want to go for this one, all I need to do is just press and hold and I have the option to rename. So rename your picture as just background.jpg. Once you've done that, as we can see here, I'm now going to press and hold. I wanna select copy to clipboard. So we can now scroll to the top here, or we can click here where it says up DIR. That takes us up, up again, up one more time. And when you get to internal shared storage, that's the top of your internal storage. So I can click there once, go to the right, and click on paste. Okay, we can see my previous image is there, but that's fine, so I can click on overwrite. I now press the home key. Don't worry, you can't see it yet because we have to tell the application to look in that directory. Let's go down, go into launcher, 
go down where it says default wallpaper. Let's click on that. Click on choose wallpaper. Give this application to your device. Click on allow. It says select that background image in that location. I say okay. That's it. I now press the home key. Is it going to work first time? Oh yes it is. And we now have a beautiful 4K or a high resolution wallpaper. Looks really nice. And that's working great first time. So that's the first thing we've done now. We've changed the custom wallpaper to something else. Next up we have, how do we get the long press home key? Because as we can see guys, when I press and hold this, it doesn't do anything. Well, the way you do that is you press and hold the context key, which is the one with the three lines. Let me do that now. And whilst that's pressed down, you press the home key for a second. So you hold it for just a second. So I'm gonna press and hold this. Now press and hold this for a second. One, let go. And there it is guys, we can see that's now come up. Let's try that one more time. So press and hold the context key and press this for a second. One, let go. And there it is. So that's how you access the long press home shortcut if you want to go to your apps library or put your device to sleep or mirroring or go straight to your settings. Let's back out of that. Okay, so how do we now customize this and tweak it to our liking? Well, the first thing I like to do is actually enable the favorites because as you can see guys, I do have a lot of applications and the last thing I wanna do is just keep scrolling to the right until like the end of time. So if there are applications that you are regularly using, I do recommend adding them into your favorites. So. Let's say for example, I regularly use uh, this thing over here. I can press the context key on that and select add to favorites. We can see it's added in there now. Let's press back. And we can see immediately that's now added at the top. Uh, let's say for example, I want to add this to my favorites. So two applications, press the back button. And uh, let's also add in this one, add to favorites. So even though I've installed 50 different applications, if I'm regularly using just these four, it just makes it so much easier having them in their own row. So that's the first thing I like to do. The other thing is, is the size of these tiles. So depending on if you have a big TV or a widescreen TV, you may want to adjust that. Now in my case, because my monitor is ultra wide, I do like to see more things on the screen at the same time. So the way we tweak that is if you go to the bottom, go to your launcher, apps, games, and rows, go to banner appearance. And here, for example, you can adjust the size of those tiles. So by default, it's set to 100%. But I personally like to tweak that down to, uh, let's say uh, 75. Click on next. Okay, let's press the home key. And we can see guys, we just get to see more things on the screen at the same time. But of course, you can adjust that or tweak that to your liking. Okay, and lastly, how'd you go back to the stock launcher permanently? Well, the great thing with that is it's actually super easy to do. All we need to do is uninstall the Launch X application. And the next time you press the home key, it'll take you straight back to your stock launcher. Now, one thing I forgot to mention is that the settings helper application is a one-time use application, which means you can only use it once. So I do recommend as soon as you started your custom launcher to go ahead and uninstall it. So I'll actually uninstall both of them now just to show you the process. So let's go down to settings. And in case you're wondering guys, this does persist after reboot. So in fact, let me just test that now just to make sure. So I'm gonna do a quick restart of my Fire TV cube. So let's press the home key first, just to make sure that the custom launcher is there. Yes, it is. I'm now going to press the select and the play button together for five seconds. So one, two, three, four, five. There it is. Let's let that now start. And just while we're waiting for this guys, I hope everybody is well and staying safe. In fact, do leave me a comment below and just let me know that you are safe and whereabouts in the world you're actually watching from. Okay, so we started up. We've now, oh, just for a second, we saw it was gonna be the stock launcher, but a split second after that, it boots into your custom launcher. And we can see that's working absolutely fine. So that's one of the questions that people always ask is that what happens when you reboot your device? Do you still get the custom launcher or do you have to do something else? But as we can see guys, even after you restart the device, it will take you back into your custom launcher without any problems whatsoever. Okay, so the last question, how do we now fully go back to the stock launcher? Because we love the Amazon adverts or whatever it is. So let's say you do wanna go back to stock. Let's go down into system. Let's go into applications. Let's go to manage install applications. Let's go down, let's uninstall the helper. Let's click on that. And as mentioned guys, even if you do want to keep the custom launcher, I do recommend that you uninstall this straight away because you can only use it once anyway. Let's click on uninstall. That's now gone. Here is launch X, let's click on that. And click on uninstall. Click on uninstall again. And now when I press the home key, it should instantly take us back to the stock launcher. Let's do that now. And there we are guys. So that's all for this video guys. Many thanks for watching. Lots of you are asking after my previous video on the Fire Stick 
on how we can also get a custom launcher working on our second generation Fire TV Cube without typing in any of the ADB commands manually ourselves. So if you did find it useful, do give it a thumbs up. Please do leave me a comment below. Let me know what you thought about this video and I'll hopefully catch up with you guys real soon. Thanks.